employees, all non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. There is additional seating upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. Madam. Quiet in the chambers, please. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Please be seated. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Morelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Cornegy. Deutsch. Here. Yeah. Diaz. Presente. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Gibson. I am here. Jonai. Gradenchik. I am here. Holden. Here. Kalos. King. Koo. I am here. <laughs> Thank you. Kalos. Here. Kozlowitz. Yes. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Levin. Levine. Mizell. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Perkins. Present. Reynoso. Moya. Powers. Richards. Here. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Yes, I'm here. King. Present. Valone. Here. Cabrera. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Williams. I'm here. Check me in two months. Jaeger. Here. Espinal. Levin. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. Thank you. Quiet in the chambers, please. All rise for the invocation. Rise. The invocation will be delivered by Father Joe Holcomb from St. Andrew Avellino at 35-60, 158th Street in the Great Borough of Queens. Quiet in the chambers. Let us place ourselves in the presence of Almighty God. All powerful and merciful God, we praise you and give you thanks for all your gracious gifts, most especially the gift of your infinite and unconditional love. It is your gift of love that inspires and drives each of us to seek peace and justice throughout our city, our nation, and our world. To gain awareness that we share a common destiny which is ultimately transcendent. Peace that is not the mere absence of violence, but as a harmonious coexistence 
of individual citizens within a society governed by justice, one in which the good is also achieved for each and every one of them. Help us through your gift of love to work diligently in these coming days, months, and years to seek peace for all in our great city. May your deliberations in this, the City Council of the City of New York, bring about understanding, tolerance, and peace in our city, in our nation, and in our world. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And now, Father. And now a, a member of uh, Father Holcomb's flock, uh, Council Member Vallone, will spread the invocation in full upon the record. Quiet in the chambers, please. Thank you, Madam Advocate. Shh. Father Joseph Holcomb serves as the pastor of St. Andrew Avellino Roman Catholic Church in Queens, New York, the parish my family calls home. A native New Yorker, Father Holcomb attended Holy Family Catholic Grammar School, Cathedral Preparatory Seminary, Cathedral College of the Immaculate Conception, and Seminary of the Immaculate Conception. He went on to attain a bachelor's degree from Catholic Cathedral College in Douglaston, New York, received a master's degree in divinity from Immaculate Conception Seminary, and a master's in social work from Fordham University. He was ordained to the priesthood in 1980 and has been faithfully serving multiple communities ever since. In July 2009, he was appointed as the sixth pastor of St. Andrew Avellino Roman Catholic Church and has worked tirelessly to make improvements from the first day at our parish. His faith and dedication pours into every member of our family as well as the surrounding community. According to Father Holcomb, over the past century, the church has had the most vocations to the priesthood or religious life, including nuns and brothers of any church in the United States. His efforts had led to the crucial enhancements at the church and a newly enriched connection with his parishioners. Father Holcomb's work in the church with the children of our academy, of which all three of my children have attended, has touched thousands of lives, and we are so privileged to have him here in the Queens community. On a personal note, during this difficult time for my family, a time where great healing and faith was needed for my wife and children, Father Joe has provided that bond with his prayers for each one of us. I am so grateful that each one of my fellow council members and family here at City Hall have now received that same blessing. Thank you, Father Joe. Bless you, Father, and thank you for your prayer today. Thank you. Adoption of minutes, Council Member Moyer. Motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of November 14th be adopted as printed. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Preconsidered M121 and M122 uh, budget documents. Finance. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M123. Uh, roll call at this time. I'd ask for a roll call vote on all of today's items on the land use call-up calendar, just the land use call-up calendar. Quiet in the chambers. Adams. I vote aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Permission to um, comment on the land use call-up in my district? Yes, council member. This housing development project um, that's on the grounds of Marcus Garvey Village ignited some really heated community conversations and negotiations that have direct impact on not just the existing residents of Marcus Garvey, but also the nearby churches and the community as a whole. The original proposal included 724 units across seven buildings that went up 12 stories in an already dense community. But with several months of advocated um, av uh, several months of some serious advocating on behalf of the community about what's best for the community, I'm glad we have come to some form of middle ground. I'm glad that we'll be able to see eventually affordable housing, 80% under 60% AMI, and the other 20% between 61 and 80% AMI, and that's truly affordable for the Brownsville community. And so um, I I'm proud to be able to, to vote on this particular um, project and I look forward to really working with Marcus Garvey and the l &M developers on behalf of the community in collaboration with my um, colleague, Council Member Barron, in the months and years to come. So with that, I want to vote aye on all the land use call-ups, but I also ask for permission to be able to couple items on the general order calendar in all resolutions. Cause yes. I Thank you so much and happy holiday to everyone. Thank you. Happy holidays. I like, that, I like that sweater. 
Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Uh, aye on all, and I'll hold my comments for when it's presented. During, thank you. You're welcome. Borelli. Brennan. Cabrera. Shh. Aye. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Constantinidis. Aye. Cornegy. Aye on all. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Aye. Trom. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Gibson. I vote aye. Jonai. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. With your permission, can I vote on all land use call-ups and everything on the calendar today? Yes. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander. Levin. Levine. Mizell. Menchaka. Aye. Quiet. Miller. Quiet in the chambers, please. Shh. Moya. Perkins. Powers. Aye and all. Borelli. Reynoso. Richards. Aye and all. Rivera. Aye and all. Rodriguez. Rose. Rosenthal. Aye. I know. Salamanca. Aye. I know. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Yes. Valone. Aye. I know. Van Bramer. Williams. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. Today's land use call ups are adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Quiet in the chambers as we now hear from the speaker, Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you all for being here with us this Thursday, our last stated meeting of 2018. And uh, we have a busy agenda ahead of us. Before we get into our agenda, I want us to take some time to send my best wishes and the best wishes of the entire city council to the seven firefighters who were injured in Sunnyside, Queens last week responding to a fire in Councilmember Van Bramer's district. To the FDNY, I say, and I know all of us say thank you. Thank you for your bravery and your courage and our thoughts continue to be with the Sunnyside community and the members of the FDNY and their families who were injured last week. I also want to take this time to acknowledge the loss of, again, two 9-11 first responders who we have lost since our last stated meeting. Detective Stephen Mullen and Lieutenant, and Lieutenant Jennifer Meehan both died from illnesses they developed during their time serving down at Ground Zero. Let's remember Detective Mullen and Lieutenant Meehan and keep their families in our hearts. We are forever grateful to these heroes for their sacrifice. I am also sad to note that today, today, is a very somber anniversary here in New York City. Four years ago today, two police officers were assassinated in their car, targeted for their uniforms that they wore while they were protecting and serving our city as they were sworn to do. Detectives Wen Jin Liu and Rafael Ramos were taken from us and from their loved ones four years ago today we will never forget them. We will forever honor their memories. And so I'd ask everyone to please rise and take a moment of silence in memory of Detectives Mullen, Lieutenant Meehan, Detective Liu, and Detective Ramos.
Thank you. And I apologize if it's Detective Ramos, not Ramos, Ramos. I'd also like to acknowledge a few staff members who uh, are leaving us, sadly. Uh, they won't be with us at the beginning of next year. We're losing Yariv Shavit this week. He has been at the council for several years, first with the Community Engagement Division, and most recently with the Finance Division. Yariv, we wish you luck, and we want to thank you for all that you've done here at the council. Where is he? Is he here? Well, he left. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> we also are saying goodbye to Jeanette Merrill from the Finance Division. Jeanette was with us for three years, covering the Health Committee and the Hospital Committee and the Mental Health Committee. I got to work with Jeanette when I was chair of the Health Committee. Uh, Jeanette, I want to thank you for everything you did for me when I was chair of the Health Committee. I want to thank you for everything you've done for the current chairs and for the council as a whole. I'm really grateful for all the work we've done together, especially all the work you did with me on HIV and AIDS funding. Um, so I want to thank you and I wish, want to wish you best in your next chapter. If we could have a, a round of applause for Yariv and Jeanette. Jeanette's in the back. Jeanette, if you could stand up. Uh, there is someone else who is leaving us in 2019 that I want to acknowledge. Today is our final stated meeting with our public advocate, Letitia James. Yeah, we got the cake. Tish James has been a proud fighter for all New Yorkers as public advocate. I am so sad to see her leave us today. The good news for us is that she is going to, the good, the good news for us, majority leader, the good news for us is that Letitia James is gonna continue to fight for all of us in her new role as the next Attorney General of the State of New York. Tish, Tish is a dear, 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 dear friend of mine, someone who I love, and I know she's a dear friend of most people here, and I know that I speak for all of us when we say, go get him, Tish. We are so proud of you. We are so proud of you. We are excited for what you're gonna do. Uh, and let me say, if I was breaking the law in the state of New York, which I am not, I would be terrified right now of the thought of Attorney General Tish James coming after me. I'd be losing sleep. So Tish, you're gonna crush it. I can't wait to watch you and root for you. We love you, Tish James. Another big round of applause for the amazing public advocate Letitia James. And this is Cake Man from Fort Greene. Yay! Can someone blow those candles out? Tish, did you want to say anything, or do you want to hold it till later? I want to hold it. You hold it, okay. Okay, we're gonna, if folks could sit down. Yeah, I kind of Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Uh, now we're gonna jump into our docket. Uh, we're gonna jump into our docket for the day. Uh, the council will vote on the following land use items. A preliminary, by the way, Tish James said to me on the steps this morning of City Hall, you better not do anything to single me out today. You hear me? You hear me? I said, Tish, come on. I'm not joking. Better not. I said, just wait, Tish. So we're going to vote on the following finance items. A preliminary budget extender allowing Mayor de Blasio to submit the fiscal year 2020 preliminary budget by February 7th. An expense budget modification and a revenue, bed, revenue budget modification implementing the changes to the fiscal 2019 November plan and 20 Article 11 property tax exemptions, preserving a total of 1,069 units of affordable housing 
These properties are located in Councilmember Cabrera, Joni, Diaz, Salamanca, Gibson, Cohen, and Rivera's districts. The Council will vote on the following land use items. The Council will vote to approve zoning text amendments to modify the special garment center district to allow for the conversion of buildings from manufacturing to office space, standardize sign regulations, modify bulk regulations to ensure conformance of historical context, with the purpose of revitalizing garment manufacturing in this area. This has been a tremendous amount of work, a tremendous amount of work for years, and I want to acknowledge my partner in this effort, our great borough president, Gail Brewer. I'd also like to thank the New York City Economic Development Corporation President James Patchett, the Garment District Steering Committee, and so many others who have been crucial in helping make this a reality. I want to thank my uh, district chief of staff, Eric Botcher, and my district director, Matt Green. Together, we are taking a big step towards ensuring that the garment manufacturing industry has a permanent home in New York City. The garment district is an integral part of our city's economy and the New York fashion industry, and today we're making sure that it will flourish for years to come. The council will vote to approve with modifications a zoning text amendment proposed by the New York City Department of City Planning to establish restrictions on hotel development within M1 light manufacturing district citywide. I want to thank our chairs, Chair Rafael Salamanca and Chair Francisco Moya, for working together with their colleagues to shepherd this through the council. It was not easy, and Francisco and Rafael have worked tremendously on this. Uh, over the last year, so I'm very, very grateful for all the work that they've done. We also want to vote on the Franklin Avenue rezoning and the designation of a mandatory inclusionary housing area, option one. During negotiations, Majority Leader Cumbo secured commitments from the applicant to increase on-site affordable housing, as well as to significantly increase future affordable housing developed on the adjacent site. We'll be voting to approve, as Councilmember Ampere Samuel said, and as Councilmember Barron will speak to in a little while. We're going to vote to approve the Marcus Garvey Village applications with modifications to facilitate the development of seven mixed use buildings with 676 affordable housing units on unused portions of the Marcus Garvey Village housing development in Brownsville, located in Councilmember Barron and Ampere Samuel's districts. Also, we're going to vote to approve with modifications of rezoning in Councilmember Steve Levin's district to facilitate the development of a 12-story commercial office building at 29J Street in Dumbo. The council will vote on the site selection of two schools. The first school is a 432-seat primary school and a 231-seat 3K and UPK facility in Minority Leader Matteo's district on the former St. John's Educational Campus. The second school is a 380-seat primary school in Councilmember Menchaca's district on the site of St. Rosilia Church. I want to thank the land use staff, Brian Paul, Amy Leviton, Julie Levin, John Douglas, and Raju Mann. Moving on, the council will vote on the following legislation. First, we're going to vote on introduction 1288A, sponsored by Councilmember Ben Kalos, which will apply the campaign finance system that voters just approved to covered elections held prior to the 2021 primary election, including special elections held this year in 2019. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Brad Reed, Elizabeth Cronk, Emily Forgione, Zachary Harris, and Rob Newman. We're also going to vote introduction 863A, sponsored by Councilmember Jumani Williams, which would prohibit employment discrimination and discriminatory uh, harassment based on an individual's reproductive health choices. I want to thank the staff, Rachel Cordero, Aminta Kilowan, Harbani Ahuja. We're also going to vote on introduction 748A, sponsored by Councilmember Fernando Cabrera, which would establish special uh, oath procedures for violations of the Taxi and Limousine Commission's laws or regulations. We'll vote on... Jason, you're killing me over there. We're going to vote on uh, two pieces of legislation requiring reporting of sexual abuse in city jails. The first, introduction 933B, sponsored by Majority Leader Cumbo, will require the Department of Correction to report on incidents of sexual abuse and harassment to incarcerated individuals. The second is introduction 1090A, sponsored by Councilmember Danny Drum, which will require the Department of Correction to report on incidents of sexual abuse, harassment, and force by the Department of Correction to people who are visiting city jails. I want to thank the staff, Brian Crow and Alana Sivan. 
We're also going to vote on introduction 633. This is a big one, sponsored by, sponsored by Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, which would require the Mayor's Office of Dana Analytics to report on an annual basis data from every city agency looking at gender, ethnicity, <clears throat> uh, gender, ethnicity, and race at multiple pay bands to find instances of pay disparities. The council on an annual basis will also be given 90-day access to employment level data for all city workers so that we can conduct our own statistical analysis. This is a giant step forward for pay equity in New York City. It took years of work, and there are many, many people I'd like to thank. I want to thank Gloria Middleton, the president of CWA Local 1180, and all of her wonderful members. I want to thank Beverly Newfield of Pow Her and Why. I want to thank our incredible chair of civil service and labor, uh, my friend Danique Miller, and of course, Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. That's just a few of the people, and I also want to thank the former president of CWA Local 1180, Arthur Chiliotis. I want to take a moment to tell you why this bill is so important. This bill is about equality. It is about equal pay for equal work, and it's about time, and this is so important, that the city recognize the contributions that people of color and women, and especially women of color, make to our city every single day as part of our city's workforce. By passing this bill today, the council is saying that we are not happy with the status quo. We will fight for equal pay and we will fight for diversity. We, will know that all, we, we know that all workplaces are better when they reflect the diversity of our city. But for too long, that has not been reflected where it matters most, in paychecks. Pay gaps and opportunity gaps for women and people of color are a reality for far too many people in this city every single day. And it's even worse in city government than it is in the private sector in New York City. That is shameful. Women employed in our city government, our municipal government, face a gender wage gap that is three times larger than the gender wage gap in the private sector in New York City. Three times larger in city government than it is in the private sector in New York City. This is unacceptable. And today the council is fighting back in a big way. I am so proud of all of us in this room. This bill will help us find and eliminate instances of pay discrimination in the city's workforce, whether that be discrimination based on gender or race or ethnicity or age or disability or any other protected category that's enshrined in our city's human rights law. I'm reminded today of the late, great Shirley Chisholm. She said that you don't make progress by standing on the sidelines. You make progress by implementing ideas, and today, we are implementing the idea of equality. I want to thank the staff who worked on this for a very long time. Malcolm Butehorn, Jeff Baker, Andre Vasquez, James Sabuti, <clears throat> Rose Martinez, Al Masawi, Brad Reed, Aminta Kilowan, Harbani Ahuja, and Leah Skripiak. <clears throat> we'll vote on preconsidered introduction 1300 in relation to naming to the naming of 68 thoroughfares and public places including Chief of Detectives William Alley, Chief Ronald Spadafora, Police Officer Manuel Manny Vargas, who all died of illnesses related to their service on 9-11. And we're also going to vote on cultural icons. Christopher Wallace, a.k.a. Biggie Smalls, is getting a street renamed after him, as well as the Wu-Tang Clan and Woody Guthrie. On a personal note, Queens Boulevard, On a personal note, Queens Boulevard and 71st Road is going to be renamed Adelaide Connaughton Way. Adelaide was a dear friend of mine. She was the longtime partner of the City Council's own Lynn Schulman, who works in our Community Engagement Division. And I'm so happy that we are voting today on this. And I'm so happy that Adelaide's many, many contributions to this city are being recognized with a street renaming in the borough that she loved. Adelaide, we miss you, and we will keep you in our hearts. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Chris Sartori, Patrick Mulvihill, 
Chima Obicheri, and Monica Bujak. Finally, we'll vote on the last piece of legislation introduced by public advocate Letitia James, introduction 1075A, would require the Department of Sanitation to establish a pilot program to collect organics from buildings wholly occupied by one or more city agencies uh, and institutional special use buildings. I want to thank the staff, Nicole Ben, Nadia Johnson, and John Seltzer. I also was remiss in earlier uh, not uh, saying, and I'm sure that Councilmember Rose, who's not with us here today, so she can't say it because she is dealing with something personal today. Um, I'm really sad that her really wonderful, is she here, is Winnie here? I'm really uh, sad that, uh, sad but happy for uh, Richmond County that her Deputy Chief of Staff, Edwina Martin, Winnie Martin, who's been at the Council since 2012, is leaving to now become the new Richmond County Public Administrator. She'll be the first woman and first person of color to ever hold that position on Staten Island. Congratulations, Winnie. We will miss you. Okay, since this is the last, uh, the final stated meeting of 2018, shh, the final stated meeting of 2018, I want to take a moment and reflect on this past year. I can't express how honored and humbled I am to serve the people of New York City alongside all of you here. Adrian, Alan, Alika, Andy Cohen, Andy King, Antonio, Barry, Ben, Bill, Brad, Carlina, Carlos, Chaim, Costa, Danny, Debbie, Diana, Donovan, Eric, Fernando, Francisco, Helen, Danique, Inez, Jimmy, Joe, Jumani, Justin, Kalman, Karen, Keith, Keith Powers, Lori, Margaret, Mark, that's an inside joke, Lori, Margaret, Mark Joni, Mark Levine, Mark Traeger, Matthew, Paul, Peter, Rafael Espinal, Rafael Salamanca, Richie, Robert, Bob, Rory, Ruben, Steve Levin, Steve Matteo, Vanessa, any Donis. Did I miss anyone? Thank God I didn't miss anyone. I want to thank every single one of you. I want to thank every single one of you. I get to stand up here and make these remarks twice a month. But this body is only strong because of the members who make up this body. You all are the ones who serve this city every single day, who serve your approximately 170,000 constituents, and in a time where there is dysfunction and distrust in government, I believe at the federal level in many instances, I believe the New York City Council is a place that is a force for good in people's lives in New York City. I've always believed that government can be a force for good and should be a force for good. And I believe that the members of this body and this institution play a crucial and critical role in serving New Yorkers. And I believe you all do that every single day. So I am so deeply honored that I get to serve alongside of you. I also want to thank a few other people, if I may. I want to thank my mom, who is my rock. I want to thank uh, my, my sister, Melissa, my nephew, Van, who's a year and a half. I want to thank some of the incredible staff, and I can't name all of them. I can just name a few of them, some of the staff that I interact with every single day here in this magnificent building. I want to thank uh, the Chief of Staff, Jason Goldman, for his incredible work since he took over in June. I'm not allowed to swear on the floor of the City Council, but people said, uh, this place is going to be in big trouble when Ramon Martinez leaves. 
And I think we're doing just fine, and that's because of Jason's leadership. I want to thank uh, C.C. Scott, uh, my chief of operations. I want to thank uh, my shadow, the guy who's always with me, Sean Coughlin, uh, Lillian Pascone, Anthony Perez, Jen Firmino, my communications director. I want to thank Eric Botcher, my district office chief of staff, and my entire uh, district office staff. And I want to thank Phyllis and Robin, who greet everyone with a smile downstairs when they come into the speaker's office. So I want to thank you all. And I also want to um, thank the uh, amazing uh, detectives that I get to spend time with every single day from the New York City Police Department. I want to thank uh, Sergeant John G, who leads that uh, detail. And I want to thank uh, Malik, who's here, and uh, Ray, and Faisal, and Pat, and Frank. Uh, I want to thank all of them for everything they do for me and they do for the city of New York. So I want to thank you all for everything you do as well. I'm extremely proud of what we accomplished, and I hope that you all are proud of what we accomplished this year as well. It's really actually amazing what we've been able to do just in one year. We stood with survivors and we passed the Stop Sexual Harassment Act in New York City, which is among the strictest legislation of its kind in the country. We stood with taxi drivers and four hire vehicle drivers to protect them in a time when the industry is in upheaval and we became the first major city in the world to regulate app-based four hire vehicle companies like Uber and Lyft. We took a major step for our city's safety and affordable housing by passing legislation to help crack down on illegal hotels. We help people who can't afford to get on the subway every morning by winning fair fares in our budget, something that is literally going to make everyday life better for hundreds of thousands of poor New Yorkers. We helped our children and our schools by securing $125 million in fair student funding. I'm looking at you, Mark Traeger. We listened to the parents of disabled children and committed $150 million to ensure that our schools are accessible. These parents came to us, they asked for our help, and we, the council, delivered for them. We fought for NYCHA residents, for runaway and homeless youth, the LGBT community. We got life-saving speed cameras turned back on. We fought for immigrants who are under attack in our city, and I could go on and on. We have had such a great year. And I am so proud of everyone in this room, everyone, the members, the staff, everyone who's standing in this room. I want to thank you all for making me the speaker of this body. I want to thank you for fighting every day for the people of this city. And I hope you all have a happy holiday season with your loved ones and a happy new year. I hope you get some rest over the next couple of weeks because we're not finished we're coming back, and I hope to do much more in 2019. I am so excited for what we've done this year and what we will do. Sending love to you all and your families. Thank you very much. Let's get on with today's votes. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Discussion of general orders, beginning with Council Member Kalos? No. Uh, next, Council Member Rosenthal. Pass. Council Member Cornegie. Cornegie. Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Public Advocate slash Attorney General. Um, I just want to speak on um, my street co naming. I'd like to take a moment to share a brief bio of Fanny Petty Watts, who, with today's passage of Intro 1300, will have a stretch of Decatur Street in Brooklyn co named Fanny Petty Watts Way in her honor. Fanny Petty Watts was born in Perry, Georgia on December 20th, 19, 1899 and attended public school in Savannah, Georgia. She continued her formal training at Georgia State College and she later graduated from Howard University with a Bachelor's of Arts in Education. She also achieved her postgraduate degree in social work and housing at New York University. Fanny Petty Watts then relocated to Brooklyn where she married the late John G. Watts and was also the mother of two sons, professionally found Founder Fanny Perry Watts was a social investigator for the Department of Social Services in Brooklyn. She was also the director of the Cradle Roll Division of Brooklyn's Nazarene Congregational Church, where she assisted with the organization and development of prenatal parenting classes and gatherings for expectant parents. She was an active member of Nazarene Congregational Church until her death. 
Additionally, and very importantly, Fannie Watts was an active participant in the local block association and was the link between community development workers and a range of other local authority and voluntary sector providers, such as the police, social workers, and teachers. Her commitment to the Bedford-Stuyvesant community and her focus on community collaboration led to the creation of a number of volunteer opportunities and community leadership roles. Fannie Petty Watts was one of the co-founders of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. She's a life member and held membership with Delta Alpha Zeta graduate chapter in Brooklyn, New York. She is credited with organizing Omicron Beta chapter in Brooklyn. Fannie Petty Watts' triumphant life ended August 22, 1995 and was buried in the cemetery of the Evergreens in Brooklyn, New York. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Cumbo. Yes. I had it written down, but I, I inherited a gift from you this year, yeah. uh, which uh, was a loss for you, but a gain for me. I am extraordinarily grateful that someone you were not able to bring along with you to the Attorney General's office from your police detail, amazing second grade detective, Renee Molina, uh, has been with me since the beginning of October. And I thought I mentioned his name, and I apologize for not, because I love Renee, and I know you love Renee as well. So I wanted to be sure that I included Renee Molina in my thanks today. Thank you for that. Council Member Cumbo. Thank you. I rise today so very proud of the legislation that we are passing today. This is an incredible opportunity, along with Council Member Miller, as well as public advocate Letitia James. We are making her story today. And I, I have a quick story to share about it. My parents are here today, and my mother and father were both uh, general managers at Off Track Betting. And they met, they fell madly in love, and here I am. But <laughs> upon finding out that they're both office managers at Off Track Betting, they had to discuss their finances. And when my mother found out that my father was making way more money than she was, let's just say heads rolled at OTB, and ultimately she wound up making more money than him. But that's just one of those stories. Not everyone has the opportunity to find out if their counterparts are making the same amount of money as they are. We are here to change that in the City Council today, and I'm so proud to work with Council Member Miller. We are tr creating the transparency that so many individuals need to know to understand if there are wage disparities that are happening every single day. As Rihanna said it in her pop song, pay me what you owe me. <laughs> but even better, Dolly Parton said it, and I'll say in closing, 40 years ago, working nine to five, what a way to make a living, barely getting by, it's all taken and no given. They just use your mind and they never give you credit. It's enough to drive you crazy if you let it. Nine to five, yeah, they got you where they want you. There's a better life and you think about it, don't you? It's a rich man's game, no matter what they call it, and you spend your life putting money in his wallet. And we know that many African-American women have to work a whole year plus eight months in order to make what their white male counterparts make. And I want to thank the dynamic and powerful black and brown women of CWA who brought this legislation forward by through, excuse me, they brought this legislation forward through a lawsuit that they created. This has brought transparency to the city of New York. I want to thank Gloria Middleton for all of her incredible work and all the dynamic members of CWA who took their power and their energy to create a way for New Yorkers all across the city. So I'll close because my comments are coming to an end. I don't want Letitia James to feel that she's given me some extra time, but I'll take it up in general orders. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Yeager. Thank you. Uh, Madam President, uh, first, uh, in your last meeting, I honor you for your service. We know each other for a long time. Uh, I was proud to support you five years ago. I know that was the right decision. I know you're not going far. Uh, you're still Brooklyn, yep. and you're only going a few blocks away, sometimes upstate, but you'll always be Brooklyn, and I'm proud to call you a friend. Your work here uh, has been incredible, and good Thank luck you. to you, and Godspeed. I appreciate that. Um, I rise today, Madam President, uh, to talk about a bill that my good colleague, Councilmember Kalos, has proposed. Um, he's a longtime champion of uh, smart, uh, increased public financing. He's always been open about that. He's always been honest about that. Um, and I know that his bill comes from a good place and it has good intentions. In my view, sometimes process is as important as the intended result. 
and we see that during the debate that we're having here in this body over Amazon. This bill was introduced last Tuesday. We had a hearing on Wednesday. Under the charter, that was the day that it laid on the desk of the members in this chamber, and we voted it out of committee today, and today we will vote it on the floor. The bill will require the City of New York, as per the uh, fiscal estimate, to spend $4 million over the next calendar year, $4 million from January 1st till November of next year. In my view, I don't think that we need to spend $4 million on a race that's already receiving public funds. The 6 to 1 is generous, 8 to 1 is a little more generous. There's no question the voters chose 8 to 1 for the future, but they didn't choose it for this special election that's happening in 75 or so days. And we had a choice to not spend an additional $4 million. We could have spent it on NYCHA, could have spent it on school teachers, police, libraries, road repairs, homeless, health care, all the other things that we talk about in this council that we want to spend money on, that we can't because we can't afford it. And here's $4 million, Madam President, I'm wrapping up in a second, $4 million that we're going to spend. I know that the proponents of this bill come from a good place. I do, because they, every single person who's supporting this bill comes from a place where we ran on the public financing, we received the money from public financing. We wouldn't be here, perhaps, but for public financing. But it is $4 million. And it's a chance to say that we don't have to spend this money. Nobody's not going to run for public advocate because that extra eight to one, that extra two dollars for every dollar is not given. Nobody, nobody has said so far, I will not run because I won't get enough money. So it's a chance to say no. It's a chance to give that money to something more useful. Thank you, Madam President, for indulging me with the extra time. And again, Godspeed to you. Uh, it's not going to be the same without you up there. Thank you. Bless you. Councilmember Kalos. Councilmember Kalos doesn't need to speak at this time, he said. Councilmember Ulrich. Okay. All right. Well, uh, first I want to say, Madam Public Advocate. Start the clock. Thank you. <laughs> My, you're leaving such large shoes to fill. Let's just uh, put it that way. But uh, uh, you've always been such a wonderful friend, and uh, the city of New York has benefited immensely uh, from your public service. And I wish to add my voice to my colleagues in honoring your service and your commitment uh, to every single New Yorker. And, uh, and we wish you the best. We know you're going to do a fantastic job as the Attorney General. I want to talk about uh, what my colleague, Councilmember Yeager, brought up with respect to the campaign finance bill that we're voting on today, intro 1288A. Uh, I will be abstaining on that bill because I intend to benefit from it. So I think it would be a conflict of interest for me to vote on something that is going to make it easier for me to receive public funding. So I don't want my abstention on that bill to be seen as anything else uh, other than me just being cautious. And I would uh, advise respectfully my colleagues who are also seeking that same office uh, if they are going to be participating in the matching funds program, they should abstain too. I think it, it sends the right message to New Yorkers that we are running a transparent, good government operation here in the City Council. So, uh, again, no disrespect to Councilmember uh, Kalos. I think it's a great bill, but I just can't vote for it if I'm going to benefit from it. Thank you very much. Reports of standing committees. On the report of special. Oh, excuse me. Councilmember Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I just want to say I stand with my colleagues that have street namings, particularly Fanny Petty Watts. She was the founder of Zeta Phi Beta, which has been noted, and that's the sorority that I pledged when I was at Hunter. Uh, Fanny Lou Hamer is being re uh, having a co-naming, Muhammad Ali Janae Way, as well as Audrey Lord. So I just want to commend my colleagues for that. I want to Sorry. just bring comments on the Marcus Garvey Extension Project, which was alluded to earlier. First, before I talk about the project, just briefly, Marcus Garvey was an outstanding individual, born in Haiti, born in Jamaica, I'm sorry, came here in 1916 and started what became the largest mass organization across the world, United Nations, the Universal Negro Improvement Association. He also founded a doll factory for black dolls because he realized there was a shortage of black dolls. He organized the black nurses because that was also a shortage that we had here in this country. And he bought three ships and started a shipping line. 
So his motto was uh, one God, one aim, one destiny. And he gave us the black liberation flag, the red, black, and green. But to talk about the project in my remaining seconds, I'm very pleased to be able to share this project with my colleague. They wanted 12 buildings. We said that's too dense. They came down to seven. They wanted 12 stories. We said that's too high. They came down to seven. I just want to encourage my colleagues to make sure that we get the benefit that we need for our community. So at the Marcus Garvey Extension Project, you will be able to get a studio for a rent of $215 to $837, depending on your income, or one bedroom from 283 to $1,058, $1, a two bedroom ranging from 425 to 1,280, or a three bedroom apartment ranging from $512 to 1,472. So I just want to encourage my colleagues, negotiate, and where people are not bringing in apartments that are in some way matched to the income of the people who live in that community, they are not doing a service to those who are struggling to stay there. And I'll have more to say about that later. And also this project will have supportive housing in it. And we're looking to negotiate a separate senior building in phase three. Thank you so much. Thank you. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Civil and Human Rights, Intro 863A, Employment Discrimination. Mr. Speaker? Amended and coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor, Intro 633A, Pay Equity Reporting. Amended and coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Criminal Justice, Intro 933B and 1090A, Sexual Abuse Reporting. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Preconsidered Intro 1303, Budget Extender. Coupled on general orders with a message of necessity. Preconsidered Reso 674, Transparency Reso. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered M121 and Reso 677 and M122 and Reso 678, Budget Documents. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 290 and Reso 679 through preconsidered LU 309 and Reso 698 on page 5, Tax Exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, Intro 748A, Oath Hearings. Coupled on general, amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1288A, Campaign Finance Law. Amended and coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 259 and LU 269 Zoning Amendments. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D uh, of the New York City Charter. Excuse me, LU 270 and Reso 699 and LU 271 and Reso 700 Franklin Avenue Rezoning. Coupled to general orders. LU 272 through LU 281 on page 9, Marcus Garvey Village and 29 J Street. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 287 and Reso 701, and LU 288 and Reso 702 school facilities. Coupled to general orders. LU 289 and Reso 703 sidewalk cafe. Coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Parks and Recreation, preconsidered intro 1300 in relation to the naming of 68 thoroughfares and public places. Coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste Management, intro 1075A, organic waste collection. Amended and coupled to general orders. On the general order calendar, intro 720. Site safety training. Laid over. LU 259 and Reso 704 through LU 281 and Reso 713 on page 13, various applications. Couple to general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Couple to general orders, and at this time, I would ask for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Quiet in the chambers for. Adams. Aye. Ayala. No on intro 1288A. Aye on all the rest. Baron. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Shh. Uh, as I have said before, New York City is facing an overwhelming crisis with homelessness. The ANHD has done reports and they've shared with us what the AMIs are in each of our communities. 
the most oppressed group or the most challenged group to find housing are those who are formerly homeless, those are 30%, 40%, 50%. Yes, when we came in, we did the rezoning and it passed. But the MIH is far too low for us to really make an impact on the crisis that we're facing. I do not believe that LU 270 and 271 brings housing to a community that has only 16% of its residents making $100,000 or more presently to address that project to bring in 70% at market rate. So for that reason, I'm voting no on 270 and 271, I on all the others. Thank you. Borelli. I on all accept 1288A and a Merry Christmas to all and a best of luck to our uh, Attorney General elect. Uh, may you spend as little time as possible in Albany. <laughs> Amen. Cabrera. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Madam Public Advocate, I was going to spend time, so it was a privilege to talk about whenever I get an opportunity to pass my own bill here today, but I want to spend my time uh, really talking about you. I remember uh, when I came in nine years ago, uh, we were sitting in, this, in the same row in the back. You were in the corner, uh, and there were some that said uh, she will never be public advocate. And I was thinking about that today, and uh, it's amazing how destiny always makes a way for people who have a good heart. You have a good heart, stay to the truth, fight for the truth, and for justice for the poor, as you always have. And, and I also want to commend your staff. You have amazing staff like Timothy Tapia and others that are really, uh, you know how to empower uh, future leaders. And, and in doing so, you empower uh, your office. Uh, let me just say here in closing, I want to thank uh, uh, the speaker, Brad Reed, senior counsel, um, and also Elizabeth Cronk, Zach Harris, and my own staff, Claire McLevain, uh, for intro 748. And I want to thank to all my colleagues who will be voting I on, on this bill that is going to help uh, taxi drivers and uh, with all their burdens and financial burdens that they're facing uh, today. Thank you so much, and I wish you truly the best, and may God's favor be upon your life. Thank you. Bless you. Matteo. No one, 1288, I and the rest. Chin. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. I just wanted to take this opportunity uh, to thank the speaker and all my colleagues for all their support this year. My district has been crazy, busy, hectic, never a dull moment, but I am just so appreciative uh, of all the support. And of course, to our public advocate, be great seeing you on the state, and uh, we have to look forward to so much good that will be done. And I want to wish everyone a, a happy holiday and a joyful and wonderful new year. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Cohen. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, I also just want to uh, thank and congratulate the speaker on a, an incredibly productive and successful first year. Uh, I want to profess my love for our public advocate, and uh, I'm thrilled uh, that you're going to be our attorney general. I want to wish my colleagues a happy holidays and a happy new year. Shh. I'm going to abstain on 1288, and I'm going to vote yes on all other items on the general orders calendar. Thank you. Thank you. Constantinidis. May I be allowed to explain my vote? Yes. I just wanted to congratulate our public advocate, soon to be uh, Attorney General uh, Tish James. Thank you for, I, I won't know this chamber without you. I've, uh, for you as a staffer, uh, seeing what a great council member you were and a great leader you've been, and now as a public, as a public advocate, and then moving into the Attorney General's role, uh, whether it's working in our district together at Acropolis Gardens or on climate change, every day I know how much you care about New Yorkers and how you put every New Yorker first. So we look forward to seeing you do that on the statewide level. Congratulations and wishing you all the best. Happy Thank holidays you. to all. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. <laughs> Carnegie. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. 
Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Speaker Johnson for giving us a full first year, uh, probably one of the most productive years at the Council, uh, for fighting for us as a body and putting us first. Um, I want to say to Tish James, just go get him, Tish. <laughs> Anna Vodai. Thank you. Deutsch. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. So firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of my adopted parents, Mr. and Mrs. Combo, who is sitting right behind me. <laughs> um, and uh, I just want to thank the speaker for a great year and his friendship and partnership. And uh, to you, a public advocate, um, for your friendship over the last uh, four plus years and uh, prior to public advocate as a council member in your district in Williamsburg, I think the 35th. And I want to wish all my colleagues a happy and healthy uh, Happy and healthy New Year, and happy and healthy holidays to everyone, and uh, I vote aye and all. Thank you. Drum. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. I want to congratulate the speaker on a very productive year. I want to thank uh, Councilmember Koslowitz and congratulate Lynn Shulman on the co-naming of Adelaide Connaughton Way. Adelaide was a friend of mine. She was a compassionate, wonderful human being. She fought for the voiceless, she fought for the LGBT community, she fought for those who are re-entering society, the formerly incarcerated, and for the, um, the criminal justice involved individuals. Uh, she is truly missed, and I love her dearly. Uh, and with that, I'm going to vote aye on all, except for 1288A, I vote no. Thank you. Diaz. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, would like to vote yes on all except on A63A and also there is a bill here that I have no full understanding because it deals with taxi and limousine commission and that bill was supposed to go to my committee but it's, I see this is a governmental operation and it's, this is the bill that my committee didn't want to deal with it because it's against the drivers. And it's hurting the driver. This is wrong, what you're doing, what we're doing. So I'm voting yes on 748A. It's been, we, we have, ladies and gentlemen, a driver has killed themselves for the pressure because of the, of the, of the, of the pressure that we have been put on them. And we have, we're supposed to be alleviating their they are, they are burdened, not putting more burden on them. The mayor don't want the, the original bill. Now we, do did another, we did another bill, and I didn't want to see that bill in my, in my committee because it was wrong for the driver. If this is the bill, it's wrong, it's not good, it's not good for the driver. Beside that, I'm voting yes on all. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and Happy Kwanzaa to all of you. Thank you. Espinal. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. I just really want to congratulate uh, Tish James on becoming our State Attorney General and for all the great work you've done here. And I admire all of the legislation you've passed as public advocate. So thank you for all the great work you've done. And I want to congratulate Corey and wish him a good luck on his new endeavor of becoming the public advocate January 1st. Uh, <laughs> yeah, big shoes to fill. <laughs> good luck with that. Um, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Eugene. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, I, I would like to uh, thank uh, Speaker Corey Johnson for your leadership and uh, you know, uh, keeping this body such a powerful body. And uh, we feel all empowered and inspired by your work. Thank you very much. And I know that your mother should be very happy of that. And I would like to join my colleagues also to congratulate one more time uh, uh, public advocate and uh, attorney general elect Leticia James. Many of us, we, are, we had the opportunity to serve with you uh, when you were a council member and also uh, as a public advocate. We know that you are ready and you know what you are made of. Go for it. Thank you. And all the best Thank from you. the bottom of my heart. And to all of you here in the chamber, my colleagues and all of those who are here today for this uh, great uh, uh, Senate meeting, uh, I want to wish you a very blessed and happy, healthy holiday season to you and your loved one. 
With this, uh, I vote yes on all. Thank you. Thank you. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I say that one last time. Um, I'd like to congratulate all of our colleagues passing bills today, particularly want to highlight our majority leader, Lori Cumbo, on a great bill related to pay and employment data. And I also want to congratulate Chair Donique Miller and CWA Local 1180 and all of the advocates. And I, too, want to join all of my colleagues in congratulating our amazing speaker, Corey Johnson, and his team for an incredibly successful year. In addition to all of the incredible budget successes that he cited, um, I am particularly grateful for all of my colleagues in supporting myself and Fernando Cabrera on the Jerome Neighborhood Rezoning Plan. Thank you. And fair fares and fair student funding and school accessibility, really important to me and my district, summer youth and Compass and Sonic, adult literacy and EFAP. We truly made such a difference this year, and I am grateful to be a part of this body. Want to thank our finance chair, Danny Drum, our finance director, Latanya McKinney, and my heavy hitters that really helped me on the subcommittee, Regina Pareda Ryan, Chima Obi Chair, Rebecca Chasen, and Nathan Toll. Thank you for helping me as a new chair of a subcommittee created by our speaker. I want to thank my team, Team Gibson, for holding me down both here and in the district office, led by my new chair. Chief of Staff, Wendy Gallegos. And finally, as I wish everyone a happy holiday season, I want to join in recognizing our incredible public advocate. Although I am often mistaken and called Miss James Tish uh, so many times throughout <laughs> the city, uh, there will never be another Tish James, and you will certainly be missed. You have been an advocate, a litigator, an agitator, a motivator, a champion, a leader, a role model, a friend a source of encouragement for so many of us here and in the city. You have really set the bar tremendously high, shattered glass ceilings, and overall been a phenomenal woman. So as one chapter closes, Tish, and your new chapter opens, we wish you success. We look forward to working with you in your new role. And yes, you go get them. Happy <laughs> holidays to all my colleagues. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Three Kings Day. And I look forward to working with each and every one of you in the new year. God bless. Thank you. I vote aye on all with the exception of 1288. I will abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Jonai. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. First of all, I just want to wish you, and I'm excited for your future, but mostly I'm excited for New York, Tish. Speaker, thank you on a great year. I wish all of my colleagues a happy holiday, and most of all, a healthy, peaceful, and productive New Year. I vote aye on all except intro 1288A. Thank you. Gordenchik. I was worried you forgot how to pronounce it. Um, Okay, Donovan. Madam Public Advocate, I have rarely asked your indulgence to explain my vote, and I don't think today is a good day to start to do that, so I'm not going to. However, <laughs> um, I want to thank my speaker, Corey Johnson, uh, for an outstanding first year, and especially Corey, uh, for realizing uh, my dream of uh, ending the budget dance on emergency food, and I'd be remiss if I didn't thank my partner in that, um, Steve Levin. Uh, I want to wish everybody a happy and healthy and safe holiday season. Uh, it's not going to snow before Christmas, so um, you got no excuse to go where you're going. Uh, happy New Year, a healthy New Year for everybody. And Helen, if you'll give me a moment to talk to Tish James privately. No. I just want to wish her the best of everything. Uh, last Saturday night I was with her and um, we were at a party in Southeast Queens together. And the room was packed, and there was my friend Tish just sitting in the corner by herself, attorney general-elect of the state of New York. No pretense about her, no airs about her. Um, just, just living her life as she always does. And Tish, uh, I grew up in public housing. I never realized that I could be an elected official. Mm. Um, but you carry with you the dreams of millions of young children who can now dream of making their world a better place. Um, a young girl from New York City who rose uh, to 
the top, or most of the way to the top. There's still room for growth for all of us, so <laughs> I'm not going to put you in trouble today, but right. I just want to say I am so thrilled to have supported you and uh, look forward to seeing you as our next Attorney General on January 1st. And with that, I withdraw my request to speak on this. I do vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Holden. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, congrats to Tish James, uh, unbelievable accomplishment, and Godspeed. Thank you. Uh, happy uh, and healthy holidays. And uh, I just want to thank Speaker Johnson for uh, tremendous leadership and attention. And certainly it was an entertaining year, a very fast year. But um, uh, what we accomplished is amazing, thanks to you. Um, I, I am still amazed at you and what you, uh, what you can remember, the names you can remember, the faces, and so forth. And also the... Uh, for putting up with, the, again, the, uh, the text is late at night and tolerating it and uh, answering me, and I think we have a kind of a good time. But thank you very much for a great year, Speaker Johnson. How do you vote? Sorry. <laughs> um, I on all except in, uh, intro H63A. Thank you. Kalos. This time I'd like permission to explain my vote. Yes. On November 6 of 2018, New Yorkers overwhelmingly voted to get big money out of New York City politics. After a decade-long fight for real campaign finance reform, New York literally took matters into their own hands by voting yes on ballot question one. That is, 1.4 million voters flipped their ballots over to page four uh, and voted on question one at, with 1.1 million voters choosing yes. To put that in perspective, that's almost as many people as voted in favor of this measure uh, voted for mayor in 2017, whether it was de Blasio or Melitakis. New Yorkers could not have been clear this was a mandate for New Yorkers to get big money out and reform the system now. I want to thank Speaker Johnson for endorsing question one on the ballot, recognizing this mandate of the voters and his leadership. However, despite voters clearly making it known that this reform is what they wanted, the changes did not take effect until 2021. Introduction 1288 extends the newly adopted campaign finance system to the February 2019 special election, September 2019 primary election, and November 2019 general election for public advocate, and the cascade of elections that will follow. This legislation will allow ballot question one to lower contribution limits from 2,550 citywide to 1,000, increase public matching every small dollar contribution, matching every dollar up from six to eight for $250, public grant from 75%. There's so much more, but in reminding 30 seconds, I wanted to thank Rob Newman, Brad Reed, Elizabeth Cronk, but I did want to take a moment uh, at the risk of upsetting the, the next regulator for our state, uh, despite her wishes. I just want to thank uh, New York City Public Advocate for her partnership and giving me an opportunity to stand with her, where she stood up to small companies like Comcast, blocked that merger, pushed Charter, to actually provide affordable internet for over a million low-income New York City residents. And now she's going to be in a position to actually make sure they follow through on their promise, fighting to make sure that every New Yorker can save for their pensions. And as we try to do that in Albany, it is you who will likely end up suing to make sure that we can save for our retirement. And as we try to implement electronic voter registration, uh, it will be your office that will be uh, suing to make sure that we can Make it easy for people to vote. You've got a lot ahead of you. I am confident you will get it done. I am so grateful to have you as the attorney for the city of New York, and I can't wait for you to represent all of us as a state. Thank you. Thank you. Coup. Oh, uh, I vote aye on all. Yeah. <laughs> Councilmember Coup. Uh, Madam Public Advocate, may I explain my vote? Yes. Yeah. First, I want to thank the speaker and the staff, uh, especially Jason, CC, and the wonderful staff for uh, doing a wonderful job for all of us, uh, for the city of New York. Second, I want to congratulate you for being the next AG, fighting for all New Yorkers for equal justice and equal opportunities. Yeah, I wish you very good luck in your next journey. Thank you. And lastly, I want to wish happy holidays to all my colleagues uh, because we together doing uh, many, many good things uh, for the citizens of this city, uh, making lives better.
for everyone. And I want to wish uh, those who undertake uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the undertake the next journeys, uh, running for office, wish all of, all of them good luck. And I will I for. Thank you. Kozlowitz. May I be excused to explain my vote? Yes. A year ago, I knew that Corey Johnson was going to be a very good speaker. But I never imagined that he would be a great speaker. Mm. I am happy to be able to spend my last three years in the city council under the leadership of Corey Johnson. Thank you. To Tish, I started off being a council member with you. You were a council member and public advocate. I've watched you grow, and I continue to watch you grow for the rest of my life. So thank you for everything that you have done, and it's a pleasure to know you. And with that, I vote aye on all, and I just want to wish everybody happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and Happy Kwanzaa. Thank you. Lanceman. With congratulations to Speaker Johnson on a truly extraordinary year as Speaker and for this body and with genuine excitement for my friend Tish James uh, becoming my lawyer and the lawyer of her 18 million or 19 million fellow New Yorkers, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote? Yes. Madam Public Advocate, we're really going to miss you. Uh, mm -hmm. Without your courage, I don't know if we would have had the guts to form the Progressive Caucus and to push for a living wage and paid sick days and police reform. Without your friendship, I know for sure I would have missed my 15th anniversary dinner with my wife uh, <laughs> instead of having my son and especially my daughter gain a role model that they look up to constantly. Um, so we really are going to miss you here, but we are just so thrilled you will be fighting fiercely for the rights of all New Yorkers, and we're grateful and we're counting on you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have to say one other farewell as well. Uh, this is the last meeting for Annie Levers as my policy director. Starting next week, she will be joining the speaker's team. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you are gaining someone who is truly one of the smartest and most hardworking and delightful uh, and decent people that I have ever had the opportunity to work with. Annie, fast food workers and car washeros and Lyft and Uber drivers and tenants protected from harassment and people who want a more integrated city. Uh, and I are deeply, deeply grateful for the years that we have spent together. Um, I'd be lying if I said I was happy about it, um, but I am genuinely thrilled for you uh, and for the people of New York who get to benefit from your work in an even stronger way. Sorry, Brad. So. <laughs> um, uh, I also want to congratulate Councilmember Williams on intro 863A to expand the New York City human rights law to protect New Yorkers from discrimination based on their reproductive health choices. Uh, I want to thank Councilmember Kalos for pushing forward intro 1288A, which I'm pleased uh, to vote for. Um, and with only a certain amount of begrudging, uh, I vote aye on all orders on the general calendar. And I request permission to vote aye on all land use call-ups. Madam Public Advocate. Thank you. Uh, I vote aye on those as well. Thank you. Levin. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, um, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, first, I want to uh, thank the speaker on a, an amazing year and for his leadership and his friendship. Um, uh, and I know that that really goes for every member of the New York City Council. I'll quote Richie Torres uh, in saying, if Corey had an approval rating in the City Council, I suspect it would be nearly 100%. I think that that's absolutely true. Um, he has been uh, uh, so amazingly um, accessible to council members and sensitive to issues both big and small, and we greatly appreciate everything you do for us, Speaker. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, Madam Public Advocate, um, I think it needs to be noted how much you have done for this council and your dedication to this council. And you've been uh, a, a member of this body um, for over 15 years. And, um, and you have seen this body grow as an institution, and you have uh, uh, had a meaningful impact 
<coughs> on its strength and, the, and the, all the important issues that it has worked on over the last 15 years. You have been right there, um, front and center. And uh, we're so grateful, and we're going we're gonna to miss you uh, very dearly. Um, and I can just say personally, as a, I first met you, I was a staff member. I was 24 years old, and uh, you always treated me um, uh, with respect and decency, um, and, uh, and it was a pleasure to serve with you as a neighbor in the council and uh, with you as public advocate. And I can say to all New Yorkers um, that you will have an attorney general um, that is not only um, uh, a very decent person and a very honest person, uh, but a person with utmost integrity. Utmost integrity. And that is the most important quality uh, that you can have in an attorney general, um, somebody that we can have absolute confidence in. And I am proud that you will be serving that role. And lastly, before I vote, I just want to, so I want to thank you. I also want to thank uh, my colleague, Lori Cumbo, uh, for, for sponsoring the uh, renaming of a street in the 33rd district uh, in honor of Ken Thompson, yeah. uh, our late district attorney in Brooklyn, uh, who did so much in his time as district attorney and has gone far too soon. Um, we send our love uh, to his family um, during this holiday season, and we're, uh, and we're very honored to be able to uh, uh, pass uh, this small token uh, to the Thompson family today. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Rodriguez. Congratulations, Tish. Yes. My daughter, my family love you a lot. <laughs> and speaker, thank you for the great job. Jason, Chief is the whole team here. And I would like to refer briefly about two important names among few that we have here. One is Carlos Crook, who was a Dominican brother who I didn't get to meet him, but he played a major role together with Malcolm X, organizing in his time fighting for social justice. Yeah, and, and Carlos Cook, Cook was from the Dominican Republic, from San Pedro Macorís, and he played an important role in that movement. Also, today we are naming San Romero de las Americas after Bishop Anolfo Romero, who was killed in El Salvador, and one of the most important leaders that we have in the 80s, who inspired many of us to be fighting since the 1980s for immigrants and for social justice. And with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Levine. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Permission to briefly exchange, uh, explain my vote? Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, I think he stepped out, but I do want to uh, congratulate Speaker Johnson on an extraordinary, successful first year. And I want to thank him personally for helping to make this such a fulfilling and impactful year to me. And he's back. You missed the nicest things any council members ever said about you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Trust me, they were great. Um, uh, and um, you can say it again. <laughs> uh, would you like to replay the tape, um, Madam Public Advocate? Thank you for inspiring me. Thank you for daring to make history. I will miss you very, very much around this building, but I will be swelling with pride as you ascend the heights. Um, please don't be a stranger to your friends here in the City Council. Uh, we will miss you, we need you, uh, and we celebrate you. And of course, I will be, for the last time, telling you that I will be voting aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Maisel. Yes. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Men Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote. Yes. I want to vote, I'm gonna vote aye on all. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I'm most proud of is the now seventh school in the district. And this now totals over 3,000 seats that will be coming to District 38, uh, an incredible feat and a testament to the work that we're doing on the ground with parents who have been leading that discussion and re-stabilizing the relationship with the SEA. Uh, and that's going to help not just overcrowded issues, overcrowding issues, but the sense of power and empowerment of our moms in our district. Um, I want to say thank you to Corey Johnson, our speaker, and thank you for continuing to empower me and my voice as the chair of immigration. Uh, the work that we do together is not only important, but it is felt on the ground. 
all my colleagues, we got a lot of work to do. We're going to do it together. Uh, and so I, I wish you a Feliz Navidad and happy holidays uh, for next year. And then finally, I want to address our public advocate. We're going to miss you. Uh, I met you the first week that I came to New York when I was a Coral Fellow. You were our first interview. And if you can imagine the DNA that you restructured in my body to fight uh, was all because of you. Uh, that propelled me into where I am today. That shows up in a lot of different spaces where I challenge the institutions that I'm a part of, that I'm not a part of, the mayor to the governor, uh, and even you. And I want to say thank you for allowing me to continue to do that work. Uh, and you will be the next Attorney General of the incredible state, and we will fight together. And I hope that you can uh, join, we can join together in that fight. We have a lot of, we have a lot of work to sue the hell out of Trump. <laughs> we have a lot of work to sue the governor. We have a lot of work to sue the mayor. And I think we're, when we find that moment of justice, we're gonna do that together, I have no doubt. Thank you so much. Thank you. Miller. Uh, permission to explain, please? Yes. Before I lose this voice here. So um, I want to start by just saying congratulations once again to our next attorney general, my good friend and colleague, my sister, and, and who is absolutely not going anywhere. If you know Tish yet, you will see her. She will pop up everywhere that you <laughs> walk in the door. And, and here comes Tish. So we're excited about the work that you're going to do, the work that we'll continue to do together. I want to take a moment to talk about uh, intro 633. Today, after three long years of tense legal battles and negotiations, we have made a breakthrough in our ongoing efforts to combat systematic racism and unconscious bias in our, how our city values this work done by women and people of color within the Civil Service Corps and its workforce. We will pass landmark pay equity legislation introduction 633 that finally lifts the curtain on the extreme disparities that have limited the upward mobility and earning potential of these dedicated workforce members who toil for generations only to see that they, their ascent slowed by a deep-seated culture of nepotism, privilege, and sexism. For years, the administration acted in a way that was contrary to its principles of fairness and equity for all New Yorkers, regardless of gender, race, by resisting our efforts to obtain demographic information that would effectively eliminate pay discrimination. But we have pushed hard for a bill that would enable, through data analysis, necessary to fix these inequities and to promote a genuinely merit-based civil service system. For that, I want to thank Public Advocate, Attorney General Tish James, Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, Speaker Corey Johnson for the courage to once again bring this to the floor and see it to fruition. M President Gloria Middleton, and of course my friend and mentor Arthur Chiliotis, as well as the staff that have worked so hard to pass this legislation that will make a difference in the lives of women and folks of color who have unjustly been passed for promotion and today will bring pay equity. If you indulge me, I'd just like to thank the civil service staff, Councilor Malcolm, Kevin, Elizabeth, and Kendall, from my staff, Brandon Clark, and the great Joe Goldblum. And I'd just like to leave by wishing everyone a happy and safe holiday season. But also, um, I'm also losing a staff member today who will be moving on to go to work in the state, and that is uh, Mr. Akshay Patel um, is, is going to move forward, but I think that is what we are all about here, cultivating uh, that next generation of leadership, and I am very proud of the work that we have done together and look forward to working with each and every one of you in the year 2019. Thank you again, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you. Moya. Love you, Tish. Love you, Speaker. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Perkins. Aye on all, and congratulations, Tish. Thank you. Powers. 
Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. I won't be as efficient as Moya, but I'll, uh, I'll try. Uh, I just want to say congratulations also to the speaker for what is a very successful year. I also want to congratulate him, Eric Botcher, and the staff here for the garment district that's passing today, which is something they have worked on for a very long time. So I want to say congrats to them. Um, I want to say also that we are doing a lot of street renamings, Biggie and all of them, but I know that one that is really meaningful is the one for Adelaide today. And I know Lynn Schulman is here, and that is such an important thing to memorialize her, the work that she did, the Fortune Society, the work that she's done in her community. I know that, um, that we will be, this is really, not, maybe not the one everybody knows as much, but the one that's really going to be personal to this body. So thank you for, for all those who participate in that. Um, and finally, uh, Ms. Public Advocate, we're so proud of you. I think you've heard it, so I don't want to be repetitive, but I know you probably want me to be repetitive. Um, we're really proud of you. You came from this body. You keep on going up. Maybe president is next. We don't know. Uh, but, uh, but we are really proud of the work you're doing and your partnership and your leadership here. We'll miss you up there. Corey Johnson will be the next public advocate. And Corey Johnson, I want to say, as the former health chair, if you were a restaurant, you'd be getting an A grade on the front of it. Uh, we look forward to you being the short-term public advocate as well. Thank you. Thank you. And Merry Christmas. Richards. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Yes. Uh, first off, I want to congratulate uh, Tish, um, who's been relentless, I want to say, principled, more importantly. And I think that that's an attribute that um, we need to keep in mind as leaders. Um, and being the conscious of our city and now obviously our state, um, you've proven that you don't have to change who you are to succeed. And I think that that's the biggest lesson I think you've taught many in this body and people across the state and country. You can be Tish. You don't have to all of a sudden be called Letitia. You have to call me Letitia. <laughs> Tish is fine. And my community really um, appreciates you. And thank you for being a source, most, of, most importantly, of inspiration to women I know across the state, but, but most importantly, I want to say those young women in our community of color who really look up to you, and that was certainly present last week at the party at the Gaia Brewer Club. Um, I want to thank the speaker and congratulate him on a great uh, term um, so far. Um, you know, when times of controversy come up, and it's easy as the speaker to sort of shy away from things. And, and I want to thank Corey for his leadership and standing with us uh, when Ms. Headley was attacked, mm -hmm. because he could have easily just shrunk in that moment. And I know we had a private meeting this week, and he was just as strong in that, in that meeting uh, with both the police commissioner and the head of HRA. That's what leadership is about. And I want to truly thank you for standing with us. And I know there were many of us, in including me at one point, who might have thought you were going to rule with an iron fist uh, and that the bad old days could come back if you weren't with you. Um, but you've proven a lot of people wrong, and I want to congratulate you on a good um, term. To Edwina, to Ashkar, uh, congratulations on moving forward uh, in your next endeavors. You've been uh, great to work with, um, always respectful, pleasant, and smiling. And I want to thank you uh, for who you are and congratulate you. With that being said, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rivera. Tish, keep slaying. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rosenthal. You could pass. You could pass if you want. <laughs> Permission to explain my vote. Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm just so grateful uh, that my friend Adelaide Connaughton is, is having a street named after her. Um, the Adelaide Connaughton Way it was certainly something special. Uh, she, she was an amazing woman, left us, she left us way too soon. Um, not only a Queens community leader, but really a leader for the city on many important issues, I will miss her. Um, I'm also delighted that a block of West 63rd Street in my district will be co-named Sesame Street. Uh, Sesame Street serves children everywhere from every background. And um, the truth is that they uh, are extraordinary on how they serve the entire um, 
Yeah, you look great. I get an extra second for that. Um, you know, Sesame Street serves uh, over 150 million children in 150 different countries, and it's consistently been ahead of its time uh, promoting understanding and kindness across social, cultural, and economic barriers. Their most recent Muppet is Lily, uh, who is homeless. And uh, I, I heard from Lily the other day. She is a remarkable little Muppet. Um, so Sesame's, uh, has a number, Sesame Street has a number of other programs. Their autism initiative fights stigma often associated with autism for over 10 years. Um, the Sesame Street characters and content have helped families of military families, um, help children of military families manage the obstacles of deployment, relocation, injury, and grief. Uh, the Sesame Street workshop has conducted outreach and education with millions of the world's most vulnerable children including those displaced by the tragic conflict in Syria and refugee populations both in the Middle East and Bangladesh, most recently with the Yemeni community. So thank you, Sesame Street, for leading by example and showing all of us that a better world is possible through simple acts of kindness and understanding. Um, and congratulations to you, speaker, for your awesome first year. Really uh, appreciate all the support you've given to the Committee on Women. Thank you. Oh, and Thank I you. vote, wait, and congratulations to you, Thank Madam you. Public Advocate, for being a leader for women uh, throughout the country. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, and I vote aye, aye on all. Um, yeah, I vote aye on all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Salamanca. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, first, I would like to uh, congratulate our speaker on a productive year, and I look forward to uh, 2019. And I would like to congratulate you, uh, Madam Attorney General-elect. The Bronx is proud of you. And I speak for all of my NYCHA residents in my council district when I say that you got it right by naming NYCHA the worst landlord in the city of New York. And we will continue. I know we will continue to work hand in hand to uh, right that wrong. Uh, happy holidays to all, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Torres. Aye on all. Thank you. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, public advocate, I will never forget how in the pouring rain you came down uh, to Coney Island uh, on the boardwalk to support myself, Councilman Deutsch, and our group, a small group of people that wanted to preserve the boardwalk and landmark the work at a time when the mayor opposed us. And as always, Tish James wins. And we thank you for always being there and having our back on issues hyper-local, citywide, statewide. We wish you much continued success, Attorney General-elect. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I want to say that I, I enjoy watching you on Good Day New York. Uh, and I've seen you in action in the budget room, both here at City Hall and in, up in Albany with meetings with the governor. Uh, we would not have achieved, as education chair, we will not have achieved the significant historic victories for our schools and for all of our kids, if not for your leadership. You do not take no for an answer. And I am so proud to call you my speaker and, our, and, and a friend. Um, I also just want to very briefly mention that we're having a tree co-naming in my district after Woody Guthrie. Uh, that's right, uh, Woody Guthrie, one of the most important, influential musicians of the 20th century. Uh, his music and lyrics reflected the country's deep struggles with inequity and social justice, raising awareness about issues including but not limited to racism, politics, warfare, economic inequality, and labor practices. He settled on, uh, in Coney Island on Mermaid Avenue in 1943, where he spent many years uh, of, of his life. And by the way, he is so connected to Coney Island that his family spread his ashes into the water, into the beaches of Coney Island, and Bob Dylan once referred to Woody Guthrie as the true voice of the American uh, spirit. I ask for your support uh, for this legislation because I believe we have an, a responsibility to ensure that current and future residents of our, of our city do not forget the legacy of art, music, and words as, a, as agents of change that Woody Guthrie forged across this nation and right here in Coney Island. It was in New York City where Woody Guthrie wrote perhaps his most famous song, This Land is Your Land. Well, Woody, this block is your block. And with that, 
I vote aye on all. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. I'll Ulrich. See you on the board. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. I would be uh, remiss if I did not congratulate Corey Johnson on one year of being a fantastic speaker of the council. Uh, I'll be at the council Christmas party later, so that means I'll be calling you around 2 a.m. to congratulate you again. Uh, <laughs> expect a call. I'm just warning you now. Uh, you can laugh. It'll happen. But, uh, uh, you know, he, he treats the three and a half Republicans here very well. The, uh, <laughs> we're still waiting for Holden. I don't know what's going to happen, but... Uh, Holden, He's you in look the good. Republican row. Holden, so you look good in that seat. He looks good here, I'm yeah. just saying. It's, but uh, we get treated better than we should, I think. But anyway, um, uh, I also wanted to share a story about uh, Tish James. We have a Department of Veteran Services in this city now, uh, a fully dedicated agency that serves more than 200,000 men and women who have served our country. Uh, we put MOVA, the Mayor's Office of Veterans Affairs, on the ash heap of history, and for good reason. It was always underfunded, never had the resources or the staff that it needed to do outreach and provide services and referrals for veterans and their family members. We got rid of MOVA, and we passed that bill. We did it, my colleagues. But I have to tell you, I believe, and I want to say on the record, that bill would not have been passed, and the Department of Veterans Services would not exist today if it were not for the strong and early support that we received from public advocate Letitia James. She was out there in the rain, in the cold, with the advocates, with the veterans, with the people who care about veterans. And we beat that drum all the way to the floor of the City Council, and that bill was signed into law uh, by Mayor de Blasio shortly thereafter. So, Tish, on behalf of all the veterans uh, that you have helped, in particular, I want to say thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. And I vote aye on all except uh, intro 1288A, in which I abstain. Thank you. Valone. Uh, Madam Advocate, congratulations. God Thank bless you. you and your family. Take this next week. Please shut your phone off. Enjoy the time, because <laughs> you deserve it. You earned it. You, you worked harder than anyone we've ever seen before. And for myself and my whole family, thank you. Thank to you. everyone, to Corey Speaker, our leader, Corey. Thank you very much for always standing with it, empowering each and every one of us and giving us the best year I think we've ever had. So with that, I say aye on all except for Oanus 259, which I say no. God bless every one of you. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and a healthy, healthy New Year. Van Bramer. Permission to briefly explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. First of all, I vote aye on all, including on all land use call-ups. Uh, I, too, want to congratulate Corey Johnson, our speaker, on an amazing first year and uh, his support on big things and small, including uh, such a thing called Amazon. I, on this day when we celebrate a trailblazer and a woman who has accomplished so much, I feel like I have to mention Gertrude McDonald and the street that we're honoring for her in our beloved Sunnyside, Queens. A lot of folks don't remember now, but Gertrude McDonald was the first woman uh, to receive a major party uh, nomination for state assembly in the 1960s. Uh, we honored her in this chamber when she was approaching 100, uh, and she made her 100th birthday, and she is a, a legend in Queens and certainly in Sunnyside, and she often talked about how difficult it was for a woman to run for office um, when she ran for office in the 1960s and then continued to be a civic leader for over half a century. Uh, I also want to say to you, Madam Public Advocate, uh, I recall a meeting often that I believe only you and I probably remember, uh, where there were a lot of cultural leaders in a room under a previous speaker, and the meeting didn't go as we thought it was going to go. But as you now ascend to this new leadership position, and the sky is truly the limit for you, I think about that meeting and how far people go when people underestimate them. So uh, I know you remember that too. It's an important reminder of your uncommon decency uh, with respect to that moment, uh, me and my mother. So I wanna thank you and congratulate you on your path and your journey. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Williams. May I excuse me, my vote? Yes. Thank you very much. First, I want to align myself with the words of uh, Councilmember Barron when speaking on MIH. However, I'm going to be consistent and vote aye on all and all land use call ups because of the um, option one. But my hope is that this body will look at MIH again and correct the things that were wrong. Uh, I do want to mentioned intro 863, which is called the, the New York City Boss Bill. It uh, actually expands now beyond employers. The bill adds a sexual and reproductive health decision to the human rights law. Uh, it is the uh, largest expansion in the nation and locally. Uh, I want to thank Councilmember Eugene, the Speaker, Councilmember Cumbo, Councilmember Rosenthal, Rivera Chin, the Women's Caucus, the Progressive Caucus, all the sponsors, central staff, the Speaker, Jason Goldman, Jeff Baker, Rachel Cordera, Habana Ajua, Planned Parenthood, New York City, even our Catholic charities who spoke with me with their issues, and I'm glad we were able to uh, get it done. Uh, Mike Toomey, my former LD, Malik Wright, my LD now, the Administration and the Commission on Human Rights. Uh, this is one of those things I didn't realize uh, wasn't already a law, uh, but there were some gaps in state and federal law. I'm now I'm happy that we're allowed to close those gaps now. Coverage is wide ranging from abortion and birth control usage to in vitro fertilization to HIV testing and counseling. Uh, I'm glad that this city is going to be leading the nation in how to fight back against Trump. Uh, Corey Johnson, uh, I've been waiting nine years to serve in a council that understood uh, the need to be a true co-equal branch of government and push back when necessary on this mayor. I'm very proud to now say that I serve on that council. So thank you for uh, the past year. Uh, I did want to say I'm glad that my bill is being passed on the same day as uh, Councilmember Cumber's pay equity bill. Uh, Public Advocate Tish James. I can't say it, but you know what I'm doing, okay. Yep. Uh, <laughs> congratulations, you have uh, made history. I've served with you and seen you as a public advocate, and your voice has been a part of almost all of the major things that we've done here. I thank you for being one of the core 34 uh, that passed the construction site safety. And I know that the snow chains must have brought you some good luck, and yeah. so I hope you can let me hold them or at least try on your shoes or something, because uh, I have some big dreams ahead. Uh, happy holidays to everyone, and thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, I just want to say uh, I want to shout out Muhammad Ali Gina being co-named. He's the founder of Modern Pakistan, and it's going to be the beginning of Little Pakistan. Thank you. And how do you vote? I on all, uh, and um, I on all, and all land use call-ups. Jaeger. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm not going to echo by word what everybody else has said, but my, my feelings I made uh, known earlier. Um, uh, with respect to the street namings, uh, clearly Councilmember Rosenthal uh, has the best uh, street co-naming uh, on this entire bill, but I uh, wish to quickly mention um, my salute to Councilmember Richards for uh, naming uh, co-naming a street for Rabbi Rafal Palkovitz. He, uh, he was a tremendous scholar in my community. Um, uh, he was a personal rabbi to members of my family, and uh, he was a leader and a pioneer in Farakaway, and uh, that, was a, that is a wise choice, and I salute you for doing that. Um, uh, Madam President, I vote aye on all with the exception of 1288 and intro 633, on which I vote no. Thank you very much. Happy holidays to all. Thank you. Combo. Thank you. I just want to start off by also thanking Speaker Corey Johnson. You have done an amazing job at elevating the issues that matter most to members, and for that, I thank you. I also want to congratulate you for the cover of City and State. Quite remarkable in your first year. This is really phenomenal. I also want to bring attention to individuals I didn't get a chance to thank with Intro 633A our wage transparency bill. I want to thank Laura Polpa, Jeff Baker, Tirza Nasser, Rachel Cadero, Gloria Middleton, Arthur Chiliotis, Beverly Newfield, uh, Aminta Kilowan, Malcolm Butcheron, Monica Aben, and Sebastian Levinson, and all of the people that made this possible. I also want to recognize the Biggie Smalls and Ken Thompson street co-namings. Uh, the Biggie Smalls co-naming was quite a controversial one. But it's undeniable that Biggie Smalls is perhaps the most internationally renowned figure um, coming out of Brooklyn, New York. And he has left his print 
on the borough of Brooklyn, New York. It's undeniable that he is an ingredient in the identity of Brooklyn, New York. And when you think about Ken Thompson, our first district attorney ever elected from the borough that's of African American descent, these are two individuals that lived a block away from one another, but yet have two very distinctive stories, which is what Brooklyn is made of. And to my love, public advocate, now Attorney General-elect, I love you. Love you. It has been an exciting road. There's a song that reminds me of you, The Wind Beneath My Wings. And it says, it must have been cold there in my shadow to never have sunlight in your face. You were content to let me shine. That's your way. You always walked a step behind. Well, I didn't exactly always walk a step behind, and it wasn't actually always cold in your shadow. It's been red hot, fiery, controversial, <laughs> the greatest roller coaster ride that I have ever been on. And you are the greatest, and we are so excited. It's been an honor for you to be my predecessor. And as you continue to rise, I continue to rise, and keep warming up that seat for me. Thank you. <laughs> and I vote aye on all. Love you. Love your parents. Oh, and I want to thank them, too. I want to thank my parents for being here. <laughs> and although Prince is not here, I want to thank him as well because I didn't know how I was going to get through this first year as the majority leader mom. But so many of you have been so helpful, and I thank my parents for helping me get through this year. It's been an exciting ride, and Prince has informed so much of the legislation that I have passed this year. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all, and if people want to celebrate our outgoing public advocate and attorney general-elect with the cake that we got, hopefully there'll be very few people who speak during general discussion so we can get out of here. So I vote aye on all. As we um, wait uh, for the results, I just want to say um, I want to congratulate the speaker and uh, his staff for an incredible year. I want to congratulate President, President uh, Middleton, who I guess has left, and Arthur Chiliotis, and all of the members of CWA, um, and the majority leader, uh, Lori Cumbo, and who's an excellent friend, my dear sister, my little sister, and my neighbor. Um, I want to thank her for uh, this long trail to justice for women in New York City. Um, thank you for honoring my neighbor, Ken Thompson, uh, who was a great district attorney in the borough of Brooklyn, and thank you for voting for my bill today, my last bill here in the City Council, which would expand organics collection in the City of New York. It's been a bittersweet moment for me um, for the past 15 years, five years as public advocate and 10 years as the City Council, representing uh, the, the 35th District. Um, this beautiful storied room has been home to so many memories for me. Um, it's been the great honor of my life to work here with you in the People's Chamber doing the people's business Together in this room, we fought for transparency and accountability from our government. We have worked every year to ensure that the old saying that a budget is a moral document is more than just a talking point. You guys have actually actualized it. It's been great to work with this tremendous staff, and I will always respect staff as a former staff member. I know that um, we don't get anything done without our staff, and so I truly honor them and appreciate them and will always respect them. We have passed laws that reflect the needs and values of the people who trusted us to represent them, even and especially those New Yorkers traditionally excluded from the halls of power. And even though today is my last day sitting in this chair, presiding over this body, we will always, this will always be the place where a girl from Brooklyn, uh, without rich friends, I was trying to do this without crying, This girl from Brooklyn, without rich friends and without powerful connections, uh, she plowed through, believing in her convictions and believing, that, um, believing in a simple concept called justice, and was given the chance to serve as a duly elected uh, and the voice of the people. And so today I just say thank you, and just to remind all of you of the most vulnerable amongst us, the poor, the residents of NYCHA who are suffering, seniors, children, veterans, all of those who were excluded, they speak through us. Continue to speak for them. And thank you so much, and God bless you.
Please join us in the committee room for cake. Cake Man Raven, it's the best cake in the city of New York. All items on today's general order calendar. Prove me wrong. <laughs> were adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero and zero abstentions, with the exception of land use 270 and 271, which was, adopt and which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, one negative and zero abstentions, and intro 1288A, which was adopted by a vote of 39 in the affirmative, six negative and three abstentions, and intro 863A, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, two negative and zero abstentions, and intro 748A, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, one negative and zero abstentions, and land use 259, resolution 704, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, one negative and zero abstentions, and intro 633A, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, one negative and zero abstentions, and the revised land use call-up vote is 48 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committee as indicated on the agenda. Discussion of resolutions. The resolution, resolution 566, quiet in your chambers, please. We are still in session. Resolution calling on the state legislature to pass and the governor sign um, A1093-5A uh, and S8844A, which would amend the education law to automatically enroll optional employees in the New York City Board of Education Retirement System, BRS, after 90 days of employment unless the employee affirmatively opts in or out of the program in advance. Any discussion? All of those in favor say aye. aye. All of those opposed? Any abstention? The ayes have it. Now general discussion. Um, and the only speaker is Councilmember Rivera. All right, so there's a resolution. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Give me one second, I just want to clear my throat. Um, so I'm introducing a resolution today to, to ask Congress to pass the Count Victims Act, which is to help speed up access to benefits for disaster victims and aid and agency and nonprofit coordination during and after disasters. I say this because many of you know I am a proud Puerto Rican women, woman and there are still people in Puerto Rico who are suffering. The president still will not admit how many people have died on that island, 2,975. So I ask you to join me in supporting this resolution and to everyone who has helped me around issues on Puerto Rico land use zoning uh, women's issues, a special thank you to Corey Johnson, Jason Goldman's been, he's been all right. And, and to everyone here, thank you for making my first year really, really special. I'm really proud of this body. Happy holidays, let them eat cake. Woo. Congratulations, and now closing remarks from our speaker, Corey Johnson. Uh, this meeting of December 20th, 2018, the last stated meeting of the New York City Council in this first year of the new session is hereby adjourned. And would everyone please join us in the members' lounge celebrating our public advocate, Letitia James. As they said, let her eat cake. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much.